Hey, what's going on, people? This is another installment of <coughs> movies, music, culture, and whatever else comes to our minds. I'm Crazy D, and sitting beside me is... Tracy Dion. All right, how you doing today? Listen, we just came back from seeing that movie, Sorry to Bother You. Yeah. Great movie, great movie. Uh, written and directed by Boots Riley from The Coop. For those who don't know who The Coop are, uh, Google them and go check out their music. Go on all the different platforms. Uh, also, music, the soundtrack is by The Coop. Excellent. Straight from out of Oakland. California doing their thing you know from music in the 90s all the way up till today and doing it in film right now 2018 with Sorry to Bother You when the film opens up you meet uh, Cassius Green played by Lakeith Stansfield or is it Stanfield? Stanfield yeah uh Lakeith Stanfield, he's he's uh, the only roof that he has over his head is a garage, and you find him already involved with his on and off again girlfriend named Detroit, played by Tessa, Tessa Thompson. Thompson. Yeah, so this movie starts out. I would say that it's kind of a dramedy, kind of drama and comedy together. But then it turns into this new wave, surreal uh, world that takes over in the second half of the film. Yeah, the movie was a pleasant surprise because it wasn't on my list as a movie to see, but I'm glad I saw it. It was really good. It wasn't what I expected. You have all kinds of twists and turns, and you definitely leave the film <laughs> feeling some type of way. Like it's, uh, it's like after seeing the film, I was like, that was a good film. And then afterwards, we were discussing the film. That's how you know if it's a good film, if you're still talking about that same film after having seen it an hour or two later. So. Yeah, I mean. It's really good. Um, also in the film is Omari Hardwick yeah. from Power Fame. He plays Mr. Blank. Blank. Yes. But you know, we can call him Mr. I don't give a fuck or uh, or something like that. Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. You, you, you call him when you see the movie. You call him what you want. And then Armin Hammer is the antagonist, would you say, in the yeah. film. He comes up later in the film, and you find out that there's something going on. Uh, the basic plot of the film is the basic meaning for us, what we got out of the film, or what I got out of the film, was that people will go along with anything and follow along like sheep even when they hear the truth. And how much of that is like what's going on today? No matter how much of the truth that people hear in the news because they feel like they can't do anything about it, they just go along with it. So that that's a, a most uh, important piece about this piece is that it's a social commentary on what's really happening today and you're entertained at the same time while you're watching it. Right. There's a uh, billboard that's up in the film that talks about uh, families coming to live in a compound. We've heard that those stories before. And it's about living in a compound and everything will be provided for you. All you have to do is work and become workers. And there is where there's a twist in the film and where the Cassius Clare character has a decision to make. 
And now, speaking of uh, communes and uh, things like that, you know, uh, ID Investigation Discovery Channel uh, premiered first. It premiered this new season of Greed with uh, uh, Kwame Kilpatrick, former uh, Detroit mayor. And they also have a new one called uh, People Magazine Investigates Cults. Cults. And the people, the person, the cult that they had on there was run by Dr. York. Right. Now, on the uh, on the uh, thing, they didn't call him Dr. York. They called him by his first given name, which is Dwight. Dwight York, you know, they wouldn't call him Dr. York throughout the thing. So, as the story sets up, you know, many people know the story, many people don't, but you know, after reading about uh, about drinking the Kool-Aid and uh, with Jamestown, uh, Jim Jones, uh, yeah. Jimmy Jones, Jim Jones, not Jim Jones the rapper, but right. Jim Jones, the uh, spiritual cult leader. The white guy. And the white guy. After reading about him and, um, you know, that's where the term uh, don't drink the Kool-Aid or drinking the Kool-Aid came from because he ended up poisoning all of his faithful by having them drink the Kool-Aid. But anyway, after watching that, why well, believe in anything that's cultish in the first place? But, 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 but. So, they tell the story about how he, to me, just me uh, listening to it, he picked up elements of the Nation of Islam teaching, the 5% teaching, and other uh, teachings that came around, Noble Drew Ali, all these different teachings that taught black men and women about who they are and who the devil is, actually. So he picked up this and he was using this but somewhere along the way it twisted off now we don't know how true the people who were eyewitnesses who were actually there how true it is because you know you don't know why people do what they do but they seemed credible but you would have to watch it for yourself and determine that for yourself however if what they say happened is true and it went from him marrying grown women then marrying just turned of age teenage women then uh, messing with young teenagers like 14 to 15 then ending with a 5 year old child as the story went and then the other woman who was on there who was also an eyewitness brought in the part about him messing also messing with little boys as the story goes now like I said you have to watch it for yourself and determine for yourself what you believe to be true so you know you have to weigh it out because you know producers the story that they want to tell and want to lay on you for you to believe you know every every story has a slant that's what you learn in film so that's what you have to remember so besides that however what I don't understand is they talked about him uh, messing with the women but they kind of glossed over him messing with the little boys basically raping the little boys you know you know, raping little girls, that's horrible. And rape, raping little boys is horrible. But So they should have had the same equal weight in the story. What do you think? Just trying to be objective because, you know, television, they have a way of... Lying to you? Yeah. And <laughs> skewing facts and sensationalizing things. <laughs> so, you know, we kind of just know how they are as far as covering us, um, 
you know, African Americans, you know. So I don't know who the producers were or, but um, it was something on the ID network and it was interesting to watch. And it started off, you know, like Dee said, the premise was good, you know, in the beginning, you know, to bring people together, um, black people together to educate them. And they were actually speaking in Arabic. Yeah, multiple languages. They were languages. actually multiple languages. Little That's children. Little children. I mean, that was great. But then it became kind of twisted and skewed. So, you know, like I said, it was on television. And television is entertainment. So, you don't know what was actual fact and what was fiction. Right, because they, they can take scenes like he pled guilty in court. But you, you know, they said that he pled guilty to these charges, but you know, they were also trying to get him up on tax evasion. So you don't know which time he was actually saying, I'm guilty. Right, because they could have they edited chop it any type of way. They could chop it any kind of way, you know. And, but this is, this is my point about this. If you read Genesis 18, verse 18, through, I mean, see, chapter 18 through 19, it starts with Sarah and Abraham, and they're visited by three men, which always, you know, the three wise men, that's that's the story that comes up. Everything in the Bible comes up in threes. It comes back again, and it tells the story again in threes. So you go through Genesis, you know, you go through Exodus, you go through all of them, and they tell the stories again in threes to reinforce the story to you. That's, you know, that, that's besides the point of this right here but if you go to chapter 18 through 19 it talks about how Abraham is visited by the Lord and two angels Abraham automatically knew who the Lord was and he automatically bowed down to him and they were sitting there talking now at the same time there's another story this the justification of a story that's going on at the same time it's parallelism in this story and I've never seen it depicted in film quite like the way it's described in the Bible the people who wrote the Bible who wrote that story some people say Shakespeare wrote the Bible you know translated it and turned it into stories that people could understand but whoever wrote this story the justification of what's going on the parallelism I would like to see that in film, you know, even if I would do it myself, but. Say hi to Kayla. Hi, Kayla. Okay, at the same time that uh, the Lord, God is talking to Abraham, he has his two angels. And at one point in the story, he looks at his angels and he says, should I tell him what I'm planning on doing? And he talks about Sodom and Gomorrah and so Moses I mean excuse me Abraham uh, would say you would say that he was tempting God but he said uh, not to be I'm putting it in my own words not to be disrespectful to you because you know who you are but if you can find 50 people there okay so what do I mean by that in the story they're talking about that he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because it has turned sinful. There are no good men or good women in Sodom and Gomorrah and it has turned sinful and it has turned it turned its face for the people who have turned away from God and are doing all kinds of dirty things. Okay? And so Abraham knowing that Lot is there it doesn't tell you in the story, but you put it together as they as they do it. But knowing that Lot is there, he asks God, what if there are 50 people? And then it goes from 50 people to 40 people to 30 people to, to 20 people to 10 people. And then God said that if uh, it's 10 people there, he would spare them for Abraham's sake. So the angels walk on down to Sodom and Lot is sitting outside waiting at the uh, gate 
of sorrow. So he automatically recognizes his angels, you know, as the story goes. He automatically recognizes them. He, he bows to them and said, and they say, uh, he said, please stay in my home tonight. You know, he said, no, we'll, we'll just uh, stay in the square. And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. You don't want to do that. Come on over and stay in, you know, stay in my home. You know, he insisted. And so they went into his home and they closed the door. Now, a bunch of men gathered and knocked on the door and told Lot to send the two men out that they had just saw go into his house. Lot came out and said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, take my two daughters. They have not been touched by man, but please leave these two men alone that have come into my home. And you know what those men told him? Because first, first of all, let me add this. They told him that they wanted to know the two men carnally. Okay? They wanted to know the two men carnally. Now, if you don't know what carnally means, that means they want to know them in the sexual aspect. Okay? They want to know them. And then Lot was like, no, 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 no. Take my two daughters. You know, they're, 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 they've never been touched by man. And you know what those men told him? They told him, either you sin those two dudes out I'm putting it in my own phrasing but you'll see it when you read it 18 and 19 chapter 18 19 Genesis <clears throat> he says either you they say either you send them two dudes out or we gonna give you worse than what we plan to give them do you hear that people do you hear that so <clears throat> the angel grabs opens the door and pulls Lot back in <clears throat> then the angels cast blindness upon what I would like to call, <clears throat> because that's what they were called, that's what they would be, ass rapers, okay? He, they cast blindness upon the ass rapers. Now, he told Lot <clears throat> that to get your things together and leave by morning because we're going to we're going to destroy this bad boy. We're going to destroy it. Because there's not a single righteous man in here. It was only you and your family. So take your son-in-laws. Take your daughters. Take your wife. And depart this place. So when he told his son-in-laws. What, what the angels had said. They scoffed and laughed and they didn't take him seriously. And so in the morning, somewhere in the story, they just totally just disappear. So which makes me think maybe, just maybe, maybe they were partaking in the in the the people who were blind. They was taking in uh, uh partaking in what they were doing. Okay? Because they disappear in the story. In the morning, Lot is kind of like sticking around trying to decide you know he, he's lollygagging he's trying to figure out should I stay should I go the angels grab him grab his family take him out take them outside tell them go up to the mountains he said well can we go over to this town over here he said okay we won't destroy this town going on over there and but do not look back you know do not look back at what's going to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah do not look back so they get out the two daughters and Lot and, and his wife get out the two uh, uh, son-in-laws. They're in the town somewhere. You never hear the story, but you can probably put two and two together. Somebody who was a good script writer could tell what they were really doing at the time, where they why they disappeared. But <clears throat> um, Lot's wife, in her infinite, infinite wisdom, decides that she's gonna because she hears the screaming and the wailing and and the fire I would suppose explosions maybe however they would make it in a film but she turns around and she turns to a pillar of salt now the angel said do not turn around 
and you will not be turned. They didn't say what would happen to you, but basically what happened was she was turned to a pillar of salt and Lot couldn't look back after her. He had to keep going with his daughters. Now, this whole story is going on juxtaposed with the Abraham uh, Sarah story where, you know, if you know anything about the Sarah story, a few chapters back with Abraham, she was barren and she thought that she couldn't have children. So she got one of her handmaidens, an Egyptian, to uh, lay with Abraham to produce Ishmael. And so they're up in age by the time this story happens, this juxtaposed this running parallel with the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. They're up in age. Like, she's well past childbearing years. Well past. It. And God comes to tell her that she's going to have a child. And she scoffs at it. And, and she says, me have a baby? While she was in her tent. It was maybe, maybe, maybe 50 feet from where they were sitting under a tree. And she was in the tent. And then God says, why does she laugh? And then she denied it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't laugh. I didn't deny it. She, she automatic, automatically denied it out of fear, it says in the book. <clears throat> fear causes people to automatically lie. And that's why you should not have fear. You should not have fear. Fear makes you automatically lie and think that, you know, people can't hear what you're saying. But that's, that's, that's a quick lesson within that particular few paragraphs within <clears throat> chapter 18. So he's telling her that she's going to have Isaac. So now you just suppose that. Now, you know, you got to stay with me here because this is, this is uh, very interesting. You just suppose that up against, okay, Sodom and Gomorrah is destroyed because basically they are ass rapers. And we're going to get back on what wind this all back around and bring this back around okay so meanwhile they leave and they go to the town and the daughters of uh, Lot are upset because they have no husbands and they have no way of keeping their father's line going so the oldest uh, schemes a plan that they will get the father get Lot drunk and they will lay with him and he won't know and then so the first door that does it the first night and he didn't know they did it and then this, the door, the second daughter, the youngest daughter does it and he didn't know it and so then they're pregnant to go on with their lives so this is justification about pregnancy and about what is allowed it appears in the book when it comes to keeping the lines going. Now, you take that for what it's worth. You take that for what it's worth, you know. <laughs> you know, but it's in the book. And you go read the book, and you know. And that's why they say, that's why they say, man doesn't understand God's ways all the way. Because you would say, hey, that's incest. But it must not be incest when you're trying to keep the line going. But anyway, that's for debate and discussion for another day. But you go read that. That's chapter 18. <clears throat> chapter 19, really. Okay. So let's get back to the uh, destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And how some people say that God is love and, and God loves everybody. Well, they haven't read chapter 18 and 19 of Genesis where it clearly <clears throat> states that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because at first it was being planned to be destroyed because he had heard all kinds of rumors about it so he was planning on destroying it but then Abraham tried to give it a reprieve and get it down to at least 10 and he said okay if it's 10 people in there he'll spare it but once the dudes came out there who were stricken with blindness because they wanted to basically ass rape the two angels once they came out there and they were struggling with Brian, the, the, the main point, the point is, the point, I, I just had to be clear that people who entice, who don't let 
a child be a child. Don't let a girl grow up to naturally find love and experience that. Don't let a boy naturally grow up to be who he is without any tampering. In my opinion, just my opinion, they are ass rapers. And if you read chapter 18 and 19 of, of Genesis, there is no forgiveness for those type of people who would take something for somebody, which wraps back around to the Dr. York story, where they were basically saying, Dr. York was what I just said. And who's to know? But watch the story and you judge for yourself. Read the book, Genesis chapter 18, 19 in the Bible. Read those passages. And then you make your decision for yourself. But, you know, people have to decide. And for me, I'm like, live and let live. Just don't bring it to me. I, I'm not interested. Don't bring it to me. But live and let live because ultimately... If the book is saying what it's saying and you're supposed to believe what the book is saying, then sooner or later, <clears throat> judgment comes to the ass river. All right. Now <laughs> I just I, I just had to get I just had to get it out there because you know the other side is having a field day. They're having a good time. You know, and like I said, to each day on, do what you do. Just don't bring it to me. But the other side is having a field day. But anyway. Okay, so the other story that they followed up uh, with was the premiere of Greed. Which is on uh, CSNBC. Like, it wasn't MSNBC or NBC, but the financial channel. Mm -hmm. Which is CS. Yeah, it wasn't on NBC. Right, that wasn't that. It's the CNBC. And it was the uh, new season of Greed, and they dealt with Kwame Kilpatrick. And they talked about how he was up there with Obama. We might not have had Obama if Kwame had done the right things, it appears, by what they report. Again, television, you know, you can only believe like a little bit of what you hear on television. But here he is. He's a young man, youngest youngest uh, 31 years old to be elected mayor of Detroit and the uh, older black established uh, business leaders politicians were looking for someone new to move forward with the new agenda for Detroit to rebuild Detroit and to give uh, Detroit basically a facelift through having new uh, blood and so he read in the Bible, passages in the Bible, and he presented it to him. He said, this guy was only 30, and I believe that I'm the one to lead it. And they took it, they ran with it, they believed it. As soon as he got in, though, the party started. This is disappointing. It, it's really disappointing. You know, I used to really weigh in, I used to really feel heavy when different black leadership or different people who are in prominent who were black uh important important people mm -hmm. uh would get into trouble and they would have clay feet and they would fall down mm -hmm. but then after jesse jackson did what he did with his child mm -hmm. that was when i said you no know, every every black man is not judged by what these particular black men are doing out there in the society so after him so when Kilpatrick came around I said wow and you know what they didn't cover though they, and, and it was covered highly because you know in my in my retail days I used to sell DVDs and, and the DVDs like the uh, street stars and others would have these in-depth stories this is where most of this ID channel yeah. stuff comes from now they just watch the DVDs and now they copy them and for some reason black folks some will get on camera easier for them and not think of it as snitching or dry snitching uh, when they're doing something for a white concern but 
that, that's neither here nor there in this discussion. Take that for what you want. It's a true network. Yeah, true true network. <laughs> true network is based on everything that came out, everything originally that came out and showed the stories that were on DVDs first. That black producers, black cameramen, black editors, black uh, DVD duplicators right. had created to sell to make money and then somewhere they passed a law that you couldn't sell uh, like the bum fights you couldn't sell that but if you if you put it on TV and you sell advertisement then it's okay so they just flipped the script and they ended the DVD game which I thought was going to be there but in this DVD see how I kick put the quick knowledge in there for you to know the game and know what was happening but anyway so the DVD went into more detail. It talked about how, you know, there was a party at the mansion and how uh, Kilpatrick's wife allegedly, got to say allegedly today, uh, took a, 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 a leg from off a table and beat this woman. But they left that all out the story. They they referenced it a little bit, but then they didn't reference about what happened to the woman afterwards, which we won't reference that either. But they didn't reference it, and it's, it's the things that they leave out of these stories that, you know, really show, you know, tell the truth, tell the whole story. The one thing that I liked about the uh, DVDs, like by Street Stars and... Especially the one called Game Over. Oh, yeah, when was... Game Over, let me say something. When Game Over came out, and they told the story, and they talked about the uncle, yeah. and they talked about the little boy, and what they did, and how he bled out. And I mean, it was amazing. Well, it the was, documentary it, came out before the film. Yeah, it came out before Paid in Full. Right. Get paid in full was basically verbatim what the documentary uh, told. But I mean, it was such a shocker in the way that they put it together in the twist because he was trying to figure out who had took his little brother and come to find out it was right in the household. It was crazy. I mean, that, that DVD and that was great film making great documentary it had the twist in it and it was shocking and so it's like sorry to bother yes yeah, just like <laughs> sorry sorry to bother there's a twist there's a twist yeah. and what you find is when you've been in it for so long and you deal in film or you dealt in music you find out that the uh the uh dominant culture often takes what you do repackage it, shine it up and then they will try to sell it back to unsuspecting people who look like you and some of us uh, soak it up, hook, line and sinker it's like it's the American best shit way. ever it's it, yeah American it's the American way. way like it's the best thing ever and like we, we as a people could right. never do it but when right. you when you're in the game and you understand it and you have an overstanding also of it, you realize that most of the things that are done on TV or anything, music, anything, came from us bringing the idea first. So, I mean, it's a, sh it's a shame, but what about the, what was the, um, Top Shotters? That was another film, independently made, it just, just, you know, and then after that, shortly after that, Belly came out. Right. If you have never seen Belly, Belly and you yeah. know what they did with Belly? Yeah. It, it, it was a Disney film, wasn't it? It was a Disney film that was coming out. It was one of those oh, yeah. other films that were out, yeah. and they were switching tickets yeah. and giving that film credit for That's why with the new Superfly film that came out, there was a Disney film out. Right. And I know, so I don't believe. The numbers on on that, you know, what I'm I don't believe the numbers on that because I know that when we went to go see Belly, yeah, Belly was, was packed, packed yeah. and Belly. Let me tell you something: if you want to see a great film, Belly yeah. by Hype Williams is one of the best shot films 
and shot dark like Scarface. Anybody who complains, about, I'm not Scarface, excuse me, uh, Godfather. Anybody who complains, they say, well, we, we watch it at home. We'll stop watching the bootleg for one thing. I mean, very important. Bootlegs take it down a few uh, generations and make it look crappy. But when you, when you watch Belly, anyone who complains about it being dark, stop watching the bootleg again. But anybody who complains about it being dark, Godfather 1, 2, and 3 were shot dark. They were shot like, um, I forget the, the type of film, um, but it's something house films that are shot dark. It's an art house film. That's what it's called. And it was shot dark. And at first, the people at, I guess it was Paramount or whatever uh, film company put it out because they shot it and then they presented it to them. Um, when they first saw it, they said, it's too dark. We can't see anything. It went on to gross all that. So anyone who says that Belly was too dark, again, stop watching the bootleg and watch the original and watch it on a 55-inch screen. Listen to the sound quality. Listen to the mixing. Listen to, look at the picture Watch the storytelling that Hype Williams did. Yeah, Nas and DMX, they did it. Excellent job. Watch the story. Storytelling is more than just the narrative. Storytelling is the camera angle, how it swings, uh, you know, what, how they make you feel in, 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 in the colors that they present to you. So, I mean, so it's all in there. So we're going to get you educated up on um, watching film. So those are the two things that, you know, there's three things we're coming out. But there's some new things that are coming up. Uh, some new films that are coming out. Grab that piece, piece of paper right there. We're going to run down some of these new films that we're going to be talking about in the future when they come out. Right there in the bottom. Go ahead and do the first one. Creed 2. Okay, Creed 2. Now, you know, that's starring... None other than, you know, Killmonger. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan. He's uh, going to be uh, taking up, a re uh, creating his role as Creed or retaking up the role, reanimating it, and bringing it back for Creed 2. Now, let me tell you this about Creed 1. If you have not seen Creed 1 and you know who directed Creed 1, it's the same person who directed Fruitvale Station. Yeah, well, Ryan Coogan. That's right. And he also directed and wrote that, that blockbuster. What's that, what's that called? Oh, um, Black Panther. Black Panther. That's right. He did that. So that's coming out. And that too. Let me tell you something. When you watch part one, they do some over the shoulder work between Creed and uh, Rocky because Sylvester Stallone uh, is uh, an aged uh, retired boxer Rocky who owns a gym and he reluctantly takes on Creed after he finds out who he is right he reluctantly takes him on but there's some over the shoulder work that's done with the camera where I believe that uh Ryan Coogler, that's his name, pulled out some acting chops from out of Sylvester Stallone that you have not seen, because usually you see him in those action movies, and it's not that much acting, it's just standing up there, I'm going to beat your ass, you know, stuff like that, but he pulled out some acting out of Stallone, and I was like, jeez, like, I didn't know that Stallone could act that good, I really didn't, but you know, because we used to seeing him in Rambo and and all the other films, but he really brought out and, and, and his acting in Rocky. Well, you know that was okay. He was just slurring his voice like he was D for something. But but in Creed, he brought it out, and from the previews we saw, it it appears that he brings some more acting chops out of Stallone in this one too. What's the next film? Blind Spotting. Blind Spotting. Now, let me tell you something. Oakland, California. You know, California has always been the hotbed for independent black films. Uh, the Soul 70s cinema, I like to call it. Other people call it uh, uh, black exploitation. But we talked about how black exploitation, that term came about. 
but Oakland, California is having a renaissance in film. This is another Oakland, California based film like Sorry to Bother You. And it's about a guy who is an ex-felon who is still on probation and he sees something happen that could be detrimental and, and to him and could cause him either to be deceased or to wind up back in the penitentiary. So that's one that we're going to review. What's the next one? Nobody's Fool. Nobody's Fool. And what's the Night one after school. that? And Night School. Though, both of those films, let me tell you, Tiffany Haddish is having her day. And these films are coming out and you don't even know that they're coming out. But she's having her day in the sun. She's been working hard. Remember seeing her doing stand-up in the 90s, right? And then uh, to be here right now doing her thing. Big up, big up to Tiffany Haddish. Nobody's fool. She's a person who's getting from out of the... Uh, she's uh, being released from the penitentiary. It's a BET film, too. That's what's great about that. It's actually oh, yeah, a BET is. film. <clears throat> going to the theaters and she's a woman getting out of the penitentiary and the twist in the film is it's not a, really about her and her situation but her use of what she, her knowledge of what she's learned on the inside and her street smarts right. to figure out that her sister could be getting catfished and they're going to solve this mystery of who uh, is catfishing her sister. So stay tuned for that. That's Tyler Perry also. Uh, okay, that's Tyler Perry also. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, Tyler Perry. How about that? And then uh, Night School, you know, that's Kevin Hart's new offering to the people. And it's starring her as a night school teacher who takes no mess and she means for her people to pass and get their GED. So we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that. What's the next one? White boy Rick. Okay. White boy Rick. You know what's funny about this film is I wouldn't necessarily say that I would I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a black film, but it's got a lot of the stars. Like there's a people from there's uh, actors from Atlanta in it. There's there's the who's who of uh, black actors playing basically drug dealers, right? That, that, that's what that's what this story is uh, uh, basically surrounding. It's surrounding a certain era in the crack era, and it's supposed to be based on a true story about this white kid, 15 years old, named Rick. And you know how in the neighborhood you would have the people who, <clears throat> the, the, the white kids that were in the neighborhood that didn't escape, couldn't escape because they didn't have the financial means to, when the white flight was going on, they didn't have the means to escape and get out of what they thought when, when the realtors were coming around and saying, the black folks are it's going to take the property value down. You should sell and start this urban sprawl in the suburbs. And for the ones who couldn't get out, we would call them White Bob, White Sue, White Mike. So for them to say, for them to put in that White Boy Rick, you know, that's interesting. But the only thing that behooves me about the film is... And this is supposed to be based on a true story. That we are the only people on the planet, Earth. The only people who would allow someone that's outside of our racial group to become a kingpin. Selling a white pebble to us. So I'll leave that right there. So once we see the movie, we're going to review that. But that is just crazy to me. As anyone else, you had to be under them and, and you would never be a kingpin. You would end up, if it was the reverse, you would be nothing but a runner. You've seen that in the movies. We've seen it in Godfather, Goodfellas, when you're going on. You know what they think about you when they have you 
moving their product for them. You're nothing but a runner, but we're the only people on the planet that let someone be a kingpin. But anyway, what's the next movie? The Hate You Gave. The Hate You Gave. This is by a veteran filmmaker who has been around since the early Spike Lee era. And he's come back out to bring his voice back out in these times that we find ourselves in where everything seems like it's going in, in, in reverse. And it's about a young lady who, much like Sorry to Bother You, yeah. she knows how to put on that voice. We've really never talked about the voice because the movie was so much more than this. Than, sorry to bother you with so much more than him bigger than the trailer. just putting on yeah. a voice. He is it's bigger, bigger than, than that, that yeah. right? So we never even talked about putting on the white voice. But this person uh, puts on the whole thing. She doesn't go. She describes the high school that everybody goes to to uh, that will wind up being pregnant, somebody's baby's mama and all that, unsuccessful, broke. But then she says, but we don't do that. We go to such and such prep school and she has on her her uniform, looks like a Catholic school uniform and all that. And she talks about how she uh, acts a certain way. and But on the weekend, she's able to cut loose and actually be herself. So this is talking about switching switching from being acceptable in the white areas and then still being able to be accepted in your area like there shouldn't be a, a, a division like that anyway but anyway it's the way it is that's the way they've made it and so we work through it but so that's what the movie is about but then there's a twist there's a there's a initiating event that happens where the friend who she knows from her side of the tracks is shot down by the police officer for having nothing more than a, a brush a hairbrush in his hand and the story goes on for there so we're going to definitely uh, review that one when that comes out no this other one I couldn't understand <laughs> oh that's Whitney oh, how could you okay. not understand so Whitney <laughs> Okay, so I want you to talk about Whitney real quick because that's not one of mine that I'm looking for. Just like, you know, sorry to bother you, you know, but we're going to go see this movie and then we're going to give it. So talk about Whitney for a minute. And Whitney Houston is an icon. So just to be able to sit in the theater and to hear her voice and see concert footage and, and just, you know, the behind the scenes information. We've seen the documentaries on television on, you know, when Whitney passed, there were so many, um, what a Lifetime movie was done on her. I believe the VH1 do one also. And so, but the documentary that's in the theater is supposed to give you another aspect um, based on other people who were around Whitney and I guess their point of view and their uh, thoughts on what her life was. So if you're a Whitney Houston fan, it'd be interesting to go and see. And then what's the next one there? That's it. Uh, wait. Oh, you went around it. Oh, okay. So look, listen, people. We are in the middle of a renaissance in black film or storylines that involve black people. So we have to, you know, venture out and support these films. You know, not to think that one day, not not to say that if we support these films, then uh, they yeah, keep on making films. Because we know each generation, we've seen it, where there's a renaissance, and then they, for some reason they clip it out. But right now, we're winning because Me Too and Enough now have, have come in and have started to clean house of those who were... Uh, I would I would like to put an adjective adjective to it ratchet decision makers that had the casting couch and anything else they could think of to do, and some of them were ass rapists. But anyway, we'll leave it right there. <laughs>
<laughs> you can say no to the casting couch. Yeah, you it can say no. It wouldn't exist if people said no. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so this has been another presentation of movies, music, culture, and whatever else comes to our minds. We would like to thank you for watching. Make sure you go check out uh, Sorry to Bother You. You will be enlightened. It's a, it's a great film. It's very entertaining. And there is a twist in it that you are not going to believe that turns it from a dramedy into a surreal new wave era type film produced by Boots Riley from The Coop. Soundtrack by The Coop. And then when you hear uh, when you hear Cassius rapping, you're going to be tripping. And so the acting is really good and start you feel for the character so that speaks volumes because it's not just the film it's a film after seeing the film you're like thinking about the film so you know that's a good film like I said after you left the theater or after you watch the movie on television and you find yourself talking about that film a few hours later or the next day later <laughs> so it's a really good film okay so remember that black book TV is coming you know, uh, LordLandFilms.com is a content provider. And there are a lot of various content providers. And we're looking for new talent who are, are interested in creating shows. You know, I'm a content provider and I take care of ingesting. So if you have content that you believe that is uh, will be good to show on Black Book TV, make sure you get in contact with Brian Harris on Brian Harris. EMC consulting page on Facebook. Just leave him a message and he'll get back to you. And then we'll see what's going on because, you know, we're coming with some new things. Like you saw some new things that we just did earlier today doing some concepts. So if you're looking, if you're a beauty salon and you're looking to be seen on television on Black Book TV, the only black owned television station in Las Vegas. You know, contact me because it'll be going through my production, which is lordlandfilms.com. Come out here, do your thing, do the do, get the interview. It's a new beauty shop show coming to uh, lordlandfilms.com and then going on to Black Book TV. Also, uh, watch Like It Is Radio. If you haven't seen uh, Ladies First, it just happened where they were talking about cannabis and the effects and how it affects the youth. Make sure you go on to Crazon Dion on Facebook, C-R-A-Y-Z-O-N-D-E-E-Y-O-N and watch that and watch also, watch uh, Nothing But The Facts podcast on uh, Lordland Films influencing the next generation on YouTube. You can also watch it on Cox Cable. You can watch it on the new Roku TV on the YouTube app on your 55 inch or 32 inch or whichever TV that you want to watch because we are out there. We are making moves to make sure that our people are seen, heard, recognized, and appreciated. And stay tuned for more from LordLandFilms.com. I'm Crazy D. Tracy Dion. And we are out.